Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a self-managed superannuation fund to your Xero account, and then how to assign that fund to an employee in Xero payroll. I'm also going to show you how it flows through to superannuation in a pay run. This lesson is actually part of a full course. So if you'd like to learn more about Xero, then please check out the description below. So that's it from me. Let's jump into the lesson now and see how it's done. So just starting here with a refreshed version of the Australian demo company, the first thing we'll do is go into the settings. So just go to accounting and advanced, and then just in organization settings and payroll settings, and then just over to the superannuation tab. And this is where we're going to set up the self-managed superannuation fund. So you can see here in the demo company, there's two regulated super funds set up. There's no self-managed super funds. So to add one, all you need to do is just click on add superannuation fund, and then just make sure in this drop-down box here, you choose self-managed superannuation fund. Okay, to set up a self-managed super fund, you do need to get some details from your employee, and that will be the name of the fund the ABN or Australian business number of the fund. And then you also need to get this electronic service address alias. And then you can also put an employer number in here, which is optional. And then finally down here, you'll need the bank account details of the super fund. So you get all of those off your employee. And when you've got them all, you put them all in here. So what I'll do is I'll just put some fake information in there and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've just put a bit of information in here for a pretend self-managed super fund. So I've just got the name up there and then I've got an ABN in there, but I've just blanked it out because it's actually a real ABN. So I can't show that. And then over here in the electronic service address alias, I've just put click super in there because I know that that's actually um, a real one in there. So you just need to make sure you get the right one um, off your employee. Don't just put that in there like I have. I haven't bothered with an employer number and then I've just put some pretend bank account details down here. And once all that's in there, you can click on add and then you can go ahead and assign it to an employee. So once again, just make sure you get the real details um, off your employee and then just plug them in here in all the different boxes. Okay, so I'll just click on add. And now you can see we've got the self-managed super fund there ready for use. I'll just show you quickly over here each fund has a little menu there. If you need to edit it or delete it or mark it as inactive, you can just do it uh, by clicking on those buttons there. Okay, so the next step is to assign it to an employee. So we'll just go into payroll and employees. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we're setting up Sonia Michaels as an employee. So she's already in there in the demo company, but we'll just use her for this example. So we'll just click in there. And then to assign a super fund, you just go to the employment tab and just down here to add a super membership. And then just click on the drop down box and all those funds should come up that you had in the setup section. So we just need to click on the happy retiree SMSF. And then finally you need to put in an employee number. Now when you put in a regulated super fund, you'll usually end up with an employee number that might be say six or eight or 10 digits long. Um, for a self-managed super fund, you don't necessarily have an employee number, but you should put one in anyway. So usually if the person is the only person in that fund, you can just put the number one, or if it's a husband and wife, for example, or if there's multiple people in the fund, you may need to put another number in there, such as two or three or four. So you'll just need to check with your employee. Okay, once that's in there, you can click OK. All right, and now she's been assigned that super fund. So in order to get this to flow through to payroll, I just need to put a few things in here. I'll just put in a start date and then also just to assign the employee to a payroll calendar, which I'll do fortnightly. When you're setting up your employees for real, you'll need to do those things um, as well. So I'm just doing it there for the purposes of this exercise. I'll click on save. Okay, that's everything for this tab. So the next thing is to go to the pay template and then go to add superannuation line. 
Okay, and you get this um, pop-up box here that's got a lot of information on it. It looks pretty confusing, but if you're just paying the employee the normal superannuation guarantee contribution, which at the moment is 10%, then you just need to choose that there. Just leave statutory rate check there. And then all of these options down here, you would have set these up when you were setting up your zero account. So you just need to make sure you've got the payment frequency down there, whether you pay them quarterly or monthly, for example, and when the next payment date is. Once you've got all that right, you just click OK. OK, and now you've got that there for Sonia to be paid at the statutory rate into that particular fund. So just to show you how this flows through to payroll or to a pay run, I do need to add an earnings line. So I'll just do that now. And I'll just put ordinary hours and we'll do enter rate. Okay, so I've just said uh, 40 hours a week, $25 an hour comes to $1,000 um, gross pay per week. So we'll just click on save. Okay, that's everything for the pay template. So now we'll just go to pay employees and I'll just get rid of this draft pay run. So I'll just delete it. Okay, and now we can set up a new pay run. So I'll just click on add pay run. And we just assigned Sonia to the fortnightly calendar. So we'll choose that one. Okay, and there she is. So we'll just click on Sonia here. Okay, and we scroll down a little bit and we can see that she's being paid the 40 hours at $25 um, dollars an hour. So there's the $1,000 gross pay. And then down here in superannuation, we've got the right fund chosen there, the self-managed superannuation fund. We've got the statutory rate at the moment, which is 10%, which comes to $100 because that's 10% of the $1,000 up here. Okay, so that's all correct. So now you know how to add a self-managed superannuation fund in zero, assign it to an employee and have it flow through to a pay run. Okay, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more free videos and also check out the links in the description below for our zero courses. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.